Hey guys, it's Jim here, and today we're going to be having a look at another Squire Paranormal guitar for this year. It is going to be the Cabronita Thin Line. So, I really enjoyed the baritone, I thought the tuners weren't the best on it, but outside of that I was impressed with the overall playability of the instrument, the tones of it. Let's see what we think about this one. Okay, one thing to note here, unlike the Harley Benton guitars or anything else, these don't come in wedge boxes. And this has nothing to do with the shop I bought this from, Empire Music. This is just a standard kind of Squire thing. It's just packaged in here as is. Voila. Let me have a look. Gorgeous finish. A little bit of a thinner neck than I anticipated. Very modern seat, very lightweight. All right, let's weigh it and then we'll take it apart and see what it's all about. As expected, this guitar is indeed a featherweight, six pounds, two ounces, but you may be surprised to learn my Gibson ES339 weighs even less than that. However, let's talk about this guitar. now. This is the first thing that pops out at me, and that's because these pickups are advertised as Jazzmaster pickups. However, these have steel pole pieces on them, so they remind me a little bit more of the ones that come on the J-Mascus and the classic player, the discontinued Jazzmaster. Now I'm going to show you real quick, we're going to zoom in and I'm going to show you what I mean. These are adjustable. That's not traditional for a Jazzmaster. So if we put this guy down for a second. This is my American Vintage 65 Jazzmaster. As you can see, these are not adjustable pickups. So that's a very, very interesting thing. I expect that the Squire is going to be a bit more aggressive sounding than this one is due to that fact alone. But outside of that little detail, it reminds me a lot of the Baritone Cabronito because obviously it's really similar to layout wise. The Squire branded saddles, three-way switch, which feels exactly the same a little cheap a little loose but hopefully it works just as well as the one on the baritone did two one volume one tone both feel pretty secure that's a good sign from there this is a gorgeous lake placid blue not a ding on this guy looks like it has the regular fender strings hasn't been restrung or anything like that and if we knock on I was told that the cavity on this might be a little longer than normal, which might be contributing to some of the extra lightweightness. Now we're going to grab a screwdriver, take apart the cavity, we're going to check out the pots and the switch, and I'm also going to see if I can see how far this thing goes up. Okay, these are in fact alpha pots, they are the minis inside of this guy, but a really nice touch that you don't often see in kind of squires or low end instruments in general here from Fender. These are cloth wire, so that's a that's a really nice touch. This means these might be pretty decent pickups. Uh, the switch looks okay. That's a normal size, but yeah, too many pots. Now here's what I find very interesting. We were talking earlier about how I how I heard that this was a lot more hollowed out than you might be let on to believe, because typically the cavity is going to end right here, and that's going to be the end of it. Here's my screwdriver. Watch this. and there's still room to go. So that means at the very least, it's going about that far up. So I don't think that's a bad thing. I actually think that's a really good thing. That kind of leans it to be a little bit more true to a semi-hollow guitar in a sense uh, that you might have more true to the structure of the through. Obviously this is a bolt-on neck so it's never going to be the same as a 335 or my 339 but the fact that it is more hollow on this side too to match yeah it's definitely more hollow. This is that's that's actually that's not a negative I think that's a pretty cool thing but I have to say when you find a good shop and this isn't just about Empire Music this is my first experience with them and you can trust them on open box slash B stock instruments, this is this is a great example of why you should do it. There is absolutely no mark on this guitar. You would never know the difference. If I were to tell you that this was shipped to me as new, 
versus open box and you save yourself a decent bit of change here uh, at least a few modifications worth of things if that's a route we decide to go in our squire plate and that's pretty much it for the back of the guitar not much to say not much to see all right, now let's get to the neck. Normally we start on the neck, but I was so interested in the pickups as a jazz master guy and seeing that these are adjustable steel poles that we went there first. So let's have a feel of the frets. Pretty good up there. Oh yeah. These are not as good as the ones that came on the baritone, if, we're be if I'm being totally honest with you guys. They're not gonna be painful or anything like that but they're not smooth they're definitely not as smooth uh, as far as the actual dressing on them a little bit of noise but overall they've been they've been dressed pretty decently I have to give credit on that let's have a look at the knot No buying, nothing like that. Looks like a pretty acceptable job on that. The tuners felt really cheap on the baritone, and they feel just as cheap on this guitar. But all in all here, if the only things I have to worry about are the switch and the tuners as a general starting point here, because you can always polish frets and you can always smooth out fret ends, I'd say that we're in good territory, especially when you consider that you're getting a guitar with very unique pickups and very unique thin line design to it and a beautiful finish lightweight i'm excited to give this a try and that's going to wrap up this section of the video look at that even in the light it's a very very nice metallic finish on it striking striking instrument but none of that matters unless it sounds good so let's see what it sounds like <laughs> guys I just finished up playing this guitar this was the first time I've gotten to play guitar in about a week I've been resting up my hand had a bit of an injury and then I played a gig and I decided to take a few days off this is the first guitar I picked up since and the first thing this is personal preference I do not like this neck and the reason has nothing to do with any sort of fretwork or anything like that I was pleasantly surprised the actual playability in that aspect was a lot better than I had anticipated however that being said this is a very thin modern neck. It's just not my kind of thing. So if you're going to be getting one of these, or if you're somebody that has in the past played a thin line Telecaster, a lot of those have a lot of beefier neck to them 
This one is, is, is not like that in any way, really. It's much more of a modern thing. Now, that might be your preference. It might be something you really like and you might really appreciate. This also has the 22 frets, which is pretty cool. I didn't do any solo work just because, like I said, my hand is already kind of already uncomfortable just from replaying the game for the first time in a few days. Other things of note. I, I didn't care for the tuners either. They didn't stay in tune great. This stayed in tune less reliably than the Cabronita Baritone, which I also demoed and had similar tuners on it. But I think maybe because the strings are so much thicker on that and there was a lot more tension on that guitar, maybe it did a little bit better job of holding it to tune. However, those are my only two negatives with this. Big positives, these pickups are great. These are definitely not traditional Jazzmaster pickups. These have way more output and in some aspects, it, you kind of suffer a little bit with the cleans compared to the normal Jazzmaster styles. But once you throw in a little bit of gain, these have a lot of, of bite and bark to it. And this guitar just has a really airy feel to it, obviously, because it's a semi-hollow. But it feels big, and when you play it, it feels fantastic. And tonally, I really enjoy it. This is one of the times where I think the Squire pickups, I think these are the best Squire pickups that I've tried out of any guitar from this kind of price range and this kind of thing from Fender. So really good job on that aspect. And when I purchased this guitar, I didn't purchase it like I purchased other guitars. I bought this knowing damn well I was going to keep it. I was going to be turning it into a guitar that I can take out and gig with me and also to modify. And I'm going to be taking you guys along for the journey on that. And the nice thing about a guitar like this, because it's so simple, you got your two, your two pots, Maybe a bridge, saddles, switch, tuners, nut, maybe a new neck. We'll see. I mean, there's not a whole lot that really can be changed on this thing. So I love the actual design of it. That is something that it's to die for. The finish is great. I love how, like I was going through in the initial breakdown, it's a little more semi-hollow. On this side, there's more of a cutout. This is a very light guitar. This is a very good-looking guitar. It's a reliable instrument and it's something I look forward to modifying in the future. So let me know what you would like to see on this. I will say straight off the bat, before I purchased this guitar, I already had a replacement Telecaster neck that I was debating putting on the Seafoam Green Telecaster body that currently doesn't have a purpose, but I'm thinking it might go to this one. So that might be where we start. However, any other kind of suggestions or modifications or things that you, know, you might be curious about with this guy, let me know in the comments down below and we'll see what we can make happen. However, that's all I have for you guys today. This guitar showed up right before 8 p.m., so I didn't have a whole lot of time to kind of film it, play a little bit, make my post-com review here, and then edit it for tomorrow morning, being Friday, when you guys are watching this. So I hope you appreciate the fact that, you know, I did my best here, and it is what it is. So if you like what I'm doing on this channel, leave a like, and I appreciate that as well. Subscribe if you haven't already. That means a lot to me. And like I said, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about these guitars i think this is a severely underrated design just as a very general aspect love the aesthetic of cabronitas but other than that i will see you tomorrow for another guitar related video take it easy you guys